Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is about these Promax LS heads that I'm going to use on the LS Dino Mule. I'm going to show you flow numbers in this one. I actually CC'd them too, so that's because I can tell you for sure Promax's website is completely wrong about that. And I'll also give you some of the velocity measurements and a whole bunch of other stuff in it. And you might be saying, didn't you already do a video like this? I did, but I've now modified them a little bit so you can see what the modifications did so you get a better idea. I'm also going to try shrinking up the format of these shows or episodes just because I don't think people have as much time and you got to get the stuff. So in saying that, let me pick up the camera so I can start showing you the flow numbers right off and then why I did what I did and the modifications that were done. Here are the flow numbers and I will try to explain as best I can. So bear with me on this. I flowed a stock 823 head and also one that's got a valve job. It's not here in the... I don't have it here to show you, but this is a large bore LS3. This is the small bore LS3. These are the ones that were flowed. So here we go. So it looks really confusing. So bear with me and you can take a note. You might pause your screen to look too. The stock 823 is cylinder one. So this is completely stock, nothing modified, just a regular one. I had valve jobbed it and that's what this cylinder two is. Now, if you notice, you'll see a difference right here. I'm zooming in as close as I can. The difference is from cylinder one. So if I go to cylinder three and you see these numbers that show the differences like minus whatever or plus, what it's doing, it's comparing it to the actual stock, 823 LS3 head. So anyway, uh, real quickly, um, we'll skip the stock LS3 heads because we've already talked about them, but we'll start with the small, small Promax small bore LS3 head. When I got it, it only flowed 330 which still it's 25 CFM up from a stock one. So it's, it's good there. Exhaust side flowed 247, which is about 30 CFM up from stock. So it's quite a big gain, but if you look too, there's parts where it's down. If you notice that uh, 400 valve lift, the stock Promax, cause I'm right here, small bore LS3 actually flows 10 CFM less at 400 and 26 CFM less at 300. I'm not so concerned about the 300 number. So, it wasn't good. Um, and the thing is, I've done another video where I showed you what it, it is. I flowed a stock one and it was phenomenally better. And I think I might've gotten a ringer because this one did not. So what I did was I redid the valve job and blended it because I knew that was part of the problem. And I'll show you after I show you all these flow numbers. And so we go to cylinder four here. This is the modified version. So this is valve job. Essentially it's this, it's this head. So what you see is this and I'll explain later. Um, but this is owner four and it's still comparing it to stock. So if you look here, now we're, we're still down six CFM compared to a stock 823 at 400 valve lift. But if you look now at 600 valve lift, we're up 31 CFM and now it flows 344 at 600. That's pretty good. By the way, it peaks at 351 and that's at 625 lift. It actually dropped a little bit at 640 and then it keeps dropping down and kind of climbs a little bit, but you can get there. The exhaust really picked up from the valve job because before it was only doing 245, now it's doing 257, 258. And if you look now, it's only below a stock LS3 head at 0.1 and 0.2. The rest of the times, it's it's up and it's up a considerable amount. 41 CFMs is a lot, okay? That's a lot. Now, I did not flow the stock Promax large bore head, this one, or this one, I guess you could say. I didn't flow it stock like this. This is how it comes from the factory. I did not flow it and put it on there because I instantly went to a valve job, which we'll explain in a minute. But this is what it does now having a valve job and it has the same valve job profile that the small bore does. So this is the small bore, this is the large bore. Same valve job, same blending was done. But if you could tell, it, it's just way better. So if you look at 400, it's 272 CFM. That's 8.4 better than stock. At five, it's 23 better than stock. And then if you look at 600 valve lift, it's doing 352, almost 40 CFM above stock. And yes, that's about 10 CF better than the small bore. It actually peaks at 700 valve lift and does 377, which is 76 CFM better than stock. So considerably more. The exhaust side, it's very good. It's almost the same as a small bore. The small bore actually outflows it after all the stuff that's been done than this one does, but only by a small amount. It's still going 255 versus a 258. So really, really good numbers there. So 
There's your flow numbers for the heads. Now I'm gonna real quickly tell you the measurements for them. And um, then I'll also share with you some of the other stuff you might wanna know. I'm trying to make this video short. Here are my notes as far as sizes. You might pause this or see it, but I'm gonna read it out loud, but in case you're wondering like, what are you doing? Anyway, we'll start off with the chamber size. This was actually one of the shockers. When the small bore first got here, I ordered them 63 cc chambers, by the way. They came, I measured them right off stock was 57.2. Currently, because I did this blending that you see here, they're now 59 cc's. So there's, they have all the heads will be tested. This has the by far the smallest chamber. Now, if we compare this to the large bore, this is all blended. So it's just like you see, as you see it, it is now looking at my notes real quick. I believe it's 67 cc's. So this is actually two cc smaller than stock. So this is 67 cc's versus now 59. So there is that. As far as intake runner volume. Now here's the big one. Promax advertises these as 240 cc's intake runners. They're way off. Stock, this is not me blending it at all, is 250. They're now 251. It didn't gain much from me doing the blending. But they're not anywhere near 240. They're 250 cc's. The large bore, I don't think I wrote it on there. I wrote it on my notes here. The large bore, looking real quick, trying to find out my 262 cc's. So the large bore is 262. This one's 250. So yes, it's still smaller than that, but it's not 240 cc's. It's not even close. And then I also did the exhaust ports, and I won't bore you with that too much, but I did CC the exhaust ports. They're both big. The small bore is measured 103 cc's. The large bore was 104 cc's, just in case you're wondering. Now for the rest of this stuff, for you nerds out there that want to know the rest of this information, it's great for uh, cylinder head porters. This is a velocity profile over the short side. So if you take a picture of the apex of the short side, which would be like right here, and you look down the port, so I was, picture you're looking there, you would get these. I'm not going to read them out loud, just pause it. That's the small bore. That's the large bore. The velocity at the pinch on the large bore is 295. The velocity at the pinch on the small bore is 285. So as far as runner lengths go, the small bore was 5.625 long. And, well, that's weird. I didn't put it there. Um, looks like this one's 5.5. So this one's actually slightly longer. And yes, I did measure. I measure the bottom then the top and then I add them together and average them. That should be the center line. Exhaust measured the same though at 3.375. Both of them did the same on that. Anyway, last thing I want to show you is the swirl numbers. Here are the swirl numbers. Now my swirl numbers come from my Superflow bench, so the flow numbers themselves read different because the Superflow reads higher. But anyway, that's a little swirl meter that's in there, but this bench reads higher. All the other flow numbers you saw are from the signs bench. So what we have here, this is the large bore, and this one right here is a small bore. It's measured in RPMs. So there's a blade that's in there and it turns. So the faster it turns, the more swirl it have. So the more RPM you have, the more swirl you have. This is interesting because if you look at the large board, remember this one's the one that flows more. It has less swirl because look at this. This is the small bore, 600 versus 300. And then that 200, 634 versus uh, 656. So for the majority of this part, it's not really, it's moving, but it's not moving all that fast compared to the small bore when you look at it. It gets to a thousand pretty quick and then it's really moving at the top this one's fastest speed it gets to is 2755 at 900 valve lifts this thing's moving way faster than that oops 3800 rpm almost a thousand rpm faster on the small bore versus the large bore so again for those people that keep thinking ls's have a lot of swirl they do not as a matter of fact look at this this is different so you got to really focus on this I actually tried capturing where it flowed the most because if you look, it did do 382 CFM, just like that on the Superflow bench. Superflow makes you feel good about yourself, but that's not what was the interesting part. That is, you're like 900, big deal. Look what it did. These are all negatives, which means it's flowing counterclockwise. At 730 lift, it switches. It goes from flowing, going this way to stop and then starts going dramatically back the other way, 900. And then it starts, then it reverses as soon as you get 800, back the other way, back to the way it was going before. That's unique and unusual because if you notice, the small bore is all negative. So it was always going counter. Something strange to share with you. Anyway, 
If you want more details, let me know in the comments and maybe if I get time, I'll answer them. I don't want to bore you with more details. Guys, remember, I am no Superman. I appreciate every one of my subscribers. I do not port cast iron heads. I'm not a nice guy. You guys take care. Sorry in my hurry to get the video as short as possible. I forgot to explain why I even did a valve job. I'm going to make it really short and simple. They didn't seal. So I've talked about this before, but this is a Promax, the large board one, and they have these copper seats, right, on the intake. Now, the small board does not. So as you can tell, the small board, you have your ductile iron seat. These are so much easier to machine than these pieces of crap. Now, it's not all copper ones. They're, the problem is it's not a uniform metallurgy throughout this entire seat. So you'll cut and it'll have a hard and soft part. But I must not be the only one having a problem doing it because when you get them from uh, Promax, several times these don't seal. And that was the case. So what I did initially, because I was really wanting to run them stock, and I know I could feel some of you right now like, why didn't you? I wanted to see what they do stock, not modified. Well, I, I couldn't because, I like I've showed you before, I vacuum tested them and they failed. Matter of fact, on one head, there was only one exhaust seat that passed out of the pair on the large bore. On the small bore, it had one that failed, and then it failed because of the reason I'm about to show you. This one, because this is another prime example. This head is not for the dyno mule. This one's getting sent off to a company to see if they can, um, that makes my seat and guy machine, to see if there's a better way that we can cut these where I don't have to fight it all day just to do a valve job. But anyway, so I ordered a brand new one, and this is exactly how I got it. Can you see that? You might be asking yourself, what is that? You see when they do this um, bowl blend, sometimes the guy gets a little carried away with the cartridge roll and then he drags right across and you can actually see it against the chamber here. But this angle right there, and I'm gonna move my pen out of the way in a second, but see this right here? That's where the valve's sitting and that's where it hit. See it? That's why it didn't seal. So it actually had that happen. So on the small bore heads, which would be these ones, they all sealed except for one exhaust. So since I had to fix one exhaust, uh, I might as well do the whole head. So the, the small bores usually seal, the large bores do not. So the reason why all this got done, so you're like, I really wanna see them stock, they didn't seal. And I wasn't gonna put on a head that didn't seal onto the dyno, I just wasn't gonna do it. And you're like, well, then why did you blend? Okay, well, why did you do that? Because this head right here is one for a customer and this is the valve job I use. So I use the same valve job on this one, on these. So this one's eventually gonna get, um, Ported. But as you could tell, oh, there we go. It leaves a ledge. If I just left a ledge, I'm making the head, even though it's now sealed, flow worse than stock. And that's that's not my intention. So that's why the chambers look like this, is because I had to blend out that ledge there. So hopefully that explains.